Hi and welcome to Old Time Knowledge. Well in this video I am going to be making summer vegetable soup. I did this last year. Um, I'm doing it again this year but with four jars lids. I've gotten some ham out of my out of my refrigerator and I've cut it up and I am going to be showing you how I make this. This is a favorite soup that we make especially at the end of summer using any any vegetables we might have gotten from our garden but then some other vegetables we get from the supermarket and these this is not like your typical vegetable beef soup um, and it's a very light soup it's not a heavy tomato based soup it's not supposed to be you can certainly put whatever you want to in it but this is a quintessential southern summer soup so stick with me and we'll get right to it okay as I start getting the ham cut up and ready to go I want to make something very clear. There are some folks who have left comments on my videos in the past, for instance my canning navy beans with ham video, telling me that I'm disgusting, I'm going to kill people because it's not safe to can ham and it's not safe to can cured meats, etc, etc, etc. I have to tell you that the science says you can, in fact, can ham, and you can can bacon, you can can these kinds of meats in modest amounts in recipes. And there are proven recipes that I will link below that have been tested, that are in ball canning books, that have been done by National Center for Home Food Preservation or universities, and they are safe recipes. Split pea with ham soup. Baked beans are two great examples. The trick is there is a, you need to keep your ham amount low. You're not doing whole jars of ham meat, okay? That would not be permitted. But using a small amount in each jar for flavoring is not a problem at all. And I will also include the calculation in the description below of how I determined how much ham could go in the jars that I am filling today because it is exactly the same ratio of meat, ham meat, to vegetables as you will find in the ham and split pea soup recipe. With that out of the way, I'm just going to continue breaking apart this ham here. I don't want to put big pieces of fat in my soup because we've talked about this before. The fat will just render down in the soup and it will, it will fill the jars with fat and it will end up, it can cause siphoning a poor seal, the whole nine yards, but what I can use it for is to make my broth to put in the jars, and so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, it's just going to get some of the flavor off of it, but it's not going to put too much fat in my soup. So I'm just going to put this fat aside, and then when I'm done getting my meat cut up and ready and measured out in this cup, then I will show you how I'm going to do that. So let me speed this part up where I'm cutting up this ham, and then we'll move on to the next part. Okay, you'll notice that I'll, I'll end up filling up this jar to about the two cup line. It's not even pressed down, so it's not like it's two full cups. It's less than two cups. But the reason why I chose two cups of meat is because I'm doing about nine pints of soup. Nothing in this soup is as dense as split peas. And in split pea soup, you can use up to a cup of ham and five pints of soup. So I'm doing about nine pints. So that would be about two cups or a little less than two cups. And so I'm doing less than two cups because like I said, I'm going up to the two cup line, but I'm not pressing the ham down. It's not like it's going to be really tight in the jar. So this is going to be fine. This is going to be right in line with the recipe for split pea and ham soup. The vegetables I'm putting in here, again, none of them are as dense as split peas. So you'll see this does not put much in the jars. I feel totally confident that this is a safe way to go. Okay, let me just get these jars filled up the rest of the way with the ham. And after that, then I will get my broth started. And then after that, then I will get the vegetables in the jar and we'll just keep moving on step by step. All right, here we go with the broth. I am going to be putting in four and a half quarts of water in this pot because I know exactly how much water I'm going to need. I have nine pint jars, so that's four and a half quart jars, so that's how much water I have. 
I'm going to be putting the the ham, the fat from the ham in here with a little bit of meat on it just to give it some good flavor, but I will not be putting that fat in the jar. I mean in the in the soup. So I'm going to get this brought up to a boil, let it simmer, and meanwhile I'm going to get my vegetables ready. I'm just using two tomatoes for this whole batch. I don't want to have a whole bunch of tomatoes. I might add a third one. It just depends when I dice them up what I decide, but definitely it won't be more than three. So it might end up being like a third of a tomato per jar, but I'll show up. There we go. There are some tomatoes of those two that I just cut up and I'm going to put them in jars and then I'll decide if I need another one. This is not much. Again, this is not a very tomato based soup. This is just to get a little garden fresh tomato in the jars because that's what this is all about. It's just that end of the summer harvest. See, that's not even that much in the jar. This is not much stuff in these jars. Now I've got some frozen vegetables, okra, stream beans, lima beans, and carrots. I'm going to get this into the broth that I'm making to get everything heated up and then I will add this to the jars and I'll show you how that works. Oh also this is important this is some of my corn that I grew this year. Um, I didn't get a ton of corn harvest but I got plenty to do this soup so that's definitely going in here as well. This is Silver Queen corn which I absolutely love but I'm going to be just getting all these vegetables added into this broth. I'm also adding some salt in to the tune of about a half teaspoon per pint jar. So if there's nine pint jars, that's, let's see, eight, what is that? Let me think about it. That's four and a half teaspoons of salt. Okay, uh, not, yeah, four, yeah, four and a half teaspoons of salt. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to do math while I'm, I'm, this is not while I'm making it, I'm doing the voiceover later. So, all right, so I'm, you saw ball lids, but I'm not using those. I took those off. These are brand new jars, but I have removed the ball lids. I have had too many failures with those over the last couple of years, so I'm using some four jars lids, and that's what I plan to put on these when they're done, but it's not done yet because, again, like I said, I've got to get the vegetables. There's the four jars lids. I love that they have that nice deep ring. They just work so well. Okay, so I am just going to get this broth up to a boil, and once it comes up to a boil, I'll add the vegetables in, and I'll bring you back. Alrighty, this water is starting to boil. It's not a super rolling boil yet, but that's okay. I just want to get it up to a boil, and then I'm going to get the frozen vegetables in there, and I'm going to bring it back up to a boil, and then I'll be filling my jars. So let me get these vegetables in here. Alright, so it's at a good boil. I'm going to pour in the frozen vegetables and the frozen corn and as a reminder the vegetables that I'm using are corn, okra, green beans, carrots and then there's a little bit of tomato in the jars. Um, I think that's everything. Well I'll have the ingredients down below although as far as the exact amounts I'll have to estimate those because I always just sort of eyeball it. So alright here we are I've gotten everything back up to a full boil so now I can turn this burner off, and I'm going to turn you around and get these jars filled up. All right, here we go. So I always make, make it a point to try to get the jars filled with the vegetables first, and then I'll add the broth. But I mean, some broth is going to get in there. Um, and what I do when I'm, when I'm canning soups or things like this is I will do the best I can to fill everything up the first go round. But then once I have all the jars filled, I take another little spoon and I go back and just sort of try to even everything out because I really like my jars to be equally full of things, the right amount of broth, the right amount of vegetables or meat or whatever other contents are in them. And so you'll see me doing that here shortly. Y'all, this is such a delicious soup. It's just such a light soup, but yet it... it is it's filling you know it's got all these wonderful vegetables in it and it's got a little bit of ham which gives it some great flavor and just a little bit of, of meat um, and I really recommend that you make this I, I just this is so good and if you want to put different vegetables in it go for it put whatever you like in it just make sure the vegetables you're canning are vegetables that are okay to can you know I, I don't know what wouldn't be um, you know I know some things have different canning times but this is canning at the time for meat so this is going to be canned at a safe time. There is nothing in this jar other than the ham that would have to be canned at a meat time. But I want to make sure that I'm super safe 
and so that's exactly what I'm doing. And you see, I'm taking out a little bit of broth and putting it back in the pot, and the reason I'm doing that is because I still have some vegetables in the bottom of the pot, and I want to get those in the jars, and so the way to do that is to remove some of that broth and replace it with some vegetables, and I'm going to make sure I use every bit of vegetables that I have in this pot and in this soup, because this is so good. So just bear with me while I finish getting these balanced out just right. I can't be the only one who does this. I'm sure some of you do this too. If you do canning, you surely go back and even things out before you clean and seal your jars. Okay, now I've got the vinegar. I'm going to put a little bit on a paper towel and clean the rims of these jars. Make sure if you do anything that has anything with grease in it that you use vinegar. Otherwise, you can probably use water, but I always like to use vinegar to clean the rims of my jars. And I also add a little bit in my water just to keep there from being mineral deposits on the jars. I'm just quickly debubbling with a chopstick, um, and I don't feel like there's going to be anything stuck in here, but I just want to make sure. You always want to debubble your jars, so make sure you do that. I'm getting the, the lids on. They're sticking together naturally because... I'm recording this on video and <laughs> so you get to see my struggles, but at least it's sped up. Anyway, let me get all these these um, lids on the jars and get these in the canner. Okay, they're all done, so let me get them loaded up. I'm using my 17-quart Presto canner that I've had for over 20 years. I love this thing. And I, as I said, I put a little bit of vinegar in the water to present, prevent mineral deposits on my jars. There we go. Let me get them in there. My canner will hold nine pints. Get that on, and then I'll explain to you the process. All right, so here is the vent. It has now been going long enough that there's a steady stream of steam coming out. I need to let this go for 10 minutes, so that's what I'm going to do. And after 10 minutes, then I'm going to put the little weighted gauge on it. And that's how I like to do my pressure canning. I use a weighted gauge rather than worrying about watching the gauge on the canner the whole time. The weighted gauge is far more reliable. So it's been 10 minutes. That vent back there has popped up. And now it's just time for me to get this little weighted gauge on here. And I'm going to link below to this weighted gauge. If you have a Presto canner, you can use one of these. And when you have it, you won't even have to worry about what's happening on that, that little gauge right there. Because that weighted gauge will weigh exactly what you need based on your elevation. And once it starts to wiggle a little bit, then you'll know you're at the right pressure. And you just keep it at that, that point where it's just gently wiggling all the way through for your full time, and you'll be good to go. So now, here you can see it's starting to wiggle. This has been, after just a few minutes of it being on there, it's up to this. This is all sped up a little bit, so. Now that it's wiggling a little bit, I'm going to be timing 75 minutes to let this process. When it's done processing, I'll bring you back. All right, it processed for 75 minutes. I waited until the gauge came all the way down to zero. I removed the weighted gauge. I have lifted the lid slightly and I'm letting it vent a little bit. Then I will be taking the lid off and getting these jars out of the canner and I'll show you how they turned out. Oh, they look great. They look great. And I am already hearing the jars popping as soon as I take the lid off. I know you can't hear it on this video because I'm recording a voiceover after the fact but I will tell you that every single one of these jars sealed. And this happens every time that I use four jars lids. I love the lids so much. I think I have had a four jars lid fail one time, but I realized after the fact that I had gotten something like, I think it was jalapenos, but I had gotten a seed caught in the top and I just didn't notice it. And so that stopped the lid from being able to seal because there was a little seed in the way. I don't know how I missed that, but somehow I did. Sometimes I get busy and, and I'm trying to do too many things at once and I don't pay close enough attention to cleaning my rims and that must have been one of those cases. But other than that, they always, always, always seal. So let me get this last one out. Okay, summer soup, y'all. This is delicious. I hope you make it. I hope you love it and you hope your family loves it. This is something that's wonderful to have all year round. 
enjoy the fruits of your garden harvest throughout the year. Even if you don't have a garden, you can get these vegetables from the grocery store and you can make this soup and it is so, so good. This is definitely a taste of the South, although I'm sure people would enjoy something like this all over. So, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already checked out other canning videos I have, I will link a, a playlist in the description below, as well as, as I mentioned, the links about other approved recipes that include ham or cured meats and as well as the ingredients I used in this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.